Hello everybody, welcome to The Tube. We got a lot going on. Here's our lineup. President Barack Obama boldly goes to YouTube. Will Google Glass stay alive after being discontinued? What can you do with a million dollar Mac suit? Amazon Studios takes the New Yorker to the screen. Our favorite 93 years old star celebrates social watch style and so much more. Let's dance. We start our show today with a series of important updates. First, Turkey. So is Twitter going to be banned in Turkey again? Twitter has received a court order from the Turkish government asking the service to block or remove the account belonging to one of the country's newspaper known as Birgan. Twitter has refused to do so and says it is that it intends to fight the government demand in whatever way it can, including taking the authorities to court. Well, good luck with that. Yesterday evening, an absolutely huge collection of classified data from Edward Snowden's files was published on the German website Der Spiegel. Much of this new information fills in what we already knew. NSA, GCHQ and other spy agencies have many, many ways to track and collect almost anything they want. The new documents shows how the NSA was able to tap on foreign communication grids. The NSA was also patting on the North Korean internet long before the Sony hack. This story is not over yet. Meanwhile, here in the Middle East, it turns out a selfie won't bring peace to the region. Miss Israel took a selfie with Miss Lebanon and two other contestants. And now the seemingly innocent photo of four smiling women has turned into an international incident. Lebanese media reportedly pounced on Miss Lebanon, asking her to give up her title. In response, Miss Lebanon accused Miss Israel in photobombing her. Huh, why can't we all just get along? Why? Leading YouTube personalities will interview U.S. President Barack Obama live from the White House on Thursday, Jan 22nd, following his State of the Union address to the nation on Tuesday. YouTube comedian Glozell Green and vloggers Bethany Mota and Han Green will be asking Obama questions about the issues care they most, according to a White House press release. Just look at them go. Mr. Obama. You know, the President of the United States. My subscribers want to know about education. The lack of jobs for college graduates. The economy. Racial profiling. That's a good one. Net neutrality. Unemployment. Peanut butter or jelly. <laughs> Finally, Mr. President. Who's your favorite YouTube creator? Bad news for glass holes out there. Google is terminating its Google Glass Explorer program as of Monday the 19th of January. Google will stop selling its internet-connected eyewear to consumers until the company can develop a more, well, polished and affordable version that's less likely to be viewed as a freakish device. Glass will now operate in a division stirred by veteran marketing executive Ivy Ross, whose past experience includes stints at fashion-conscious companies such as Gap and Calvin Klein. Ross will report to Tony Fidel, who played an instrumental role in the design of Apple's iPod and now runs the smart appliance maker Nest Labs that Google bought for $3.2 billion just last year. Before we uh, well discuss this development, let's take a minute to say goodbye to the Glass Explorers. I'm a rocker. I am a dog trainer. I am a Jedi Knight. I am a pipe layer. I am a home barista. I am a designer. A greenhouse gardener. A surgeon. Cross country skier. I 
I am a mom. I am an artist. I am an amateur tree climber. I am a human jungle gym and a glass explorer. Bye-bye, faceless explorers. So what does that mean for the future of Google Glass? And is this the biggest failure in Google's history? To answer these and other questions, I'm joined by the Tube's editor-in-chief, Yaron Tenbring. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hello. So is it really, well, dead? Yes. <laughs> you know, to answer simply, yes. Uh, the product is discontinued. The, the glass as we know it is no more. Uh, we're not even sure what's going to happen with it now. We know that they're not terminating it entirely, but they Google Glass as we know it is definitely oh. dead. Okay, so before we talk about the future of it, let's try and understand what happened. I mean, for, for, for what I see, it was too big to be able to fail, no? It wasn't supposed to fail. I mean, Google, with all its might and power and money, was supposed to make it work. Unless there is something really flawed in the very idea of having a computer in your eye all day, uh, which is probably the problem, because uh, nobody's nobody knows for th for certain uh, whether people want such a product or need it in any way. And we saw uh, Google Glass picking up in places like uh, uh, like hospitals. Uh, like, uh, you know, all kind of uh, uh, workmanship that mm -hmm. uh, you need your hands free, that works. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see that some sectors have a need for Google Glass, but mm -hmm. the average consumer was not convinced. You know, many people here on uh, the Tube throughout the year have said that it was maybe ahead of its time. The technology. Might you agree that it's just too soon? No. Uh, I Well, it, it might be the case, you know, no one really knows, but I think it's not just ahead of its time, it's also uh, ahead of the consumer. I mean, consumers buy things not because they're excellent or because they're uh, uh, aff affordable or because they're efficient. They buy things because they are cool. Yeah, but cool, yeah, yeah, but not efficient, because nobody knew they need an iPhone before no. the iPhone was created. No, but the iPhone was cool from second one. It was mm -hmm. this amazing pretty thing, uh, which the Google Glass was not even for one second. Even when they brought fashion designers trying to save the day, uh, Google Glass still seemed way too geeky and weird, and having it on your face uh, made other people uh, uh, kind of uh, um, unconvenient. Uh, so I, I think... You know, it's 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 a it's a case where they had this amazing technology, but a product that nobody really wants. So, yeah, so that's they're not a killing the technology. Like we, we mentioned, uh, we mentioned Ivy Ross from uh, from the Gap and uh, and Calvin Klein. Uh, the fashion factor of it is very important. The cool I think I think that's number one. I mean, uh, Google could have the most amazing uh, technologies developed in its uh, X Labs or other labs and uh, you know they they will only be able to sell products which they never really did before I mean Google is not very good at selling products it's very good at creating technologies it's very mm -hmm. good at uh, doing the impossible but products is not their forte and uh, if it's not fashionable, if it's not trendy, it will never, ever, ever sell. So I think they're very wise to bring in people who know how to create products that people actually want to buy. You know what, because uh, we talk a lot about wearable technology here on the Tube, and most of them are, well, super ugly. Um, yeah. Is that like... Um, um, is, is that telling us that maybe wearable technology is not something that's really going to succeed so much in general? Yeah, I think a lot of people need wearable technology in their workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people could use wearable technology for everywhere for sports. For But having technology on you all the time... Uh, will only happen if it's if it's very very if a very very hip thing to do. Mm -hmm. Until then, we're just going to see these clunky things that are too big and not pretty enough and not cool enough. And you know, geeks will buy them, of course. Uh, other professionals might use them. 
professionally, mm -hmm. but like you and me, uh, I don't know, not so fast. Yeah, we'll just keep our phones in our pockets. Yeah, in that's, the meantime. that's how we like it. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Elon. Thank you. Let's move on. The first Israeli company to have a slot at the Super Bowl commercial breaks, the place where every company wants to be, is the Israeli tech giant Wix. Website building platform Wix.com are spending the four and a half million dollars required just to score a 30 second slot. Wix uh, first began teasing more details about the creative direction of its hashtag It's That Easy Super Bowl campaign at the beginning of the month, releasing the first in a series of build up videos where sports stars are finding their way into the business world. Here's one of them as Entourage star Rex Lee teaches former NFL superstar Brett Favre how to roll his R's. We like it. Say sharp without the P. Say sharp. Say sharp. Without a P. Sharp. Sharp without a P. Yeah. Coo. Like a dove. Go coo. Coo. No, use your dove voice. Go coo. Coo. Tough without the F. Ta. Say ta. Shark coo. Shar coo. Coo. Yeah, but now let's do the French R. Go hi. Charcuterie. That sounds Spanish. Funny. Okay, want to feel powerful? Well, go on Amazon Japan. They might have the thing for you. Kogoro Karata, a designer in Tokyo, created what can be described as the first ever Iron Man suit prototype. The Koratas is a five-ton, four-meter-tall, four-legged mechanical suit that a person can drive and control by either getting inside the cockpit or using a smartphone. At Korata's suit, which was first designed in 2012, runs on diesel and can move at 10 kilometers an hour. Additionally, it has an arsenal of weapons, which includes a machine gun. Useful. The mechanical suit is being sold at Amazon Japan for 120 million yen, which roughly translates to one million dollars. There's only one on sale, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Speaking of, uh, well, Amazon, it seems like the retail giant is unstoppable. They had, well, an amazing week with Transparent winning the Golden Globe and signing Woody Allen to do a TV series for them. Amazing week. So this week they are back to pilot season with 12 more shows that are now available for viewing. As usual, the audience will decide which ones will get a green light for production. And this pilot season already has two shows everybody's talking about. The Man in the High Castle, an adaptation to the Philip K. Dick novel, taking place in an alternative history USA in the 60s, where the states are living under the Nazi regime. The other high-profile pilot is a TV version of the New Yorker magazine, featuring a short story, an interview, a documentary that was directed for this episode by Jonathan Damey, a poem, and some rather nifty time-lapse footage of the magazine's famous cartoons. Here's a peek at the trailer. It looks, well, awesome. This kind of experience would be in no way possible 10 years ago because public was not ready. But now they're so tired of everything. I think that we can only change this world if you change consciousness. Betty White is 93 years young, and to celebrate her birthday and to promote her show on the way, her studio arranged for her surprise flash mob, her response, priceless.
Happy birthday. Okay, the police department at Dover Dower started filming its officers to check ups when they discovered one of the policemen had a secret talent. They published it on the web, and so far, almost 14 million people shook it off with them. Shake it. Can't stop, won't stop grooving. It's like I got this music in my mind saying it's gonna be all right. Cause the players gonna play, 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 play. And the haters gonna hate, 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 h